Welcome to Australia. Australia is a country of breathtaking views, a diverse population, deeply rooted ancient culture, and one of the world's strongest economies. It is the sixth largest country in land area and is the only nation to govern an entire continent. Australia is comprised of 7.69 million kilometers of land that is mostly low plateaus with deserts, with fertile land located in the southeast. The continent is located between the Indian and South Pacific Oceans, with its land mass lying completely below the equator and is often referred to as the land down under. Its full title is the Commonwealth of Australia. With a population just under 23 million, Australia is the 56th largest country in the world compared to the United States as the fourth largest country with a population near 324 million. Australia's population encompasses a diverse group of inhabitants containing a variety of cultural, ethnic, linguistic, and religious backgrounds. English is the national language, but more than 300 languages are spoken in Australian homes. The most common are Mandarin, Italian, Arabic, Cantonese, and Greek. The Commonwealth of Australia was proclaimed on January 1, 1901. The colonies became states and a federal parliament was formed according to the Constitution. Australia is a constitutional monarchy, meaning that the head of state is a monarch or sovereign who is governed and bound by the Constitution. Australia's current monarch is Queen Elizabeth II. She is represented in Australia by the Governor General, Sir Peter Cosgrove whom she appointed on the advice of the Prime Minister, Honorable Malcolm Turnbull. Australians view the political stability of their nation considerably higher than that of their American counterparts. Throughout a 12-year period, Australia's political stability has remained relatively constant, with a range variation of only 19 tenths, with no extreme outliers. Looking at political freedom, both Australia and the United States are known to be free nations. However, Australia is ranked slightly higher than the United States on the scale. Around 2013, Australia can be seen making a slow, steady rise in political freedoms. Freedom House notes an increase in stricter immigration laws during this time. While the United States has seen a decline since around the year 2012. Throughout our research, we were able to interview successful Australian businessman Gregory Mullane. Here are his thoughts on political freedom. Do what I like and I don't have government interfering. As long as we've, you know, we've got GSTs and other taxes you have to be aware of that's got to be complied to. And as long as you, you have a good accounting structure set up, I, I think it's, everything's all right. Throughout a 12 year period from 2003 to 2015, Australia's perceived rule of law has remained stronger than the United States. During the same 12-year period, Transparency International ranks Australia cleaner or less corrupt than the United States, meaning they are less likely to misuse public power for private benefit. However, we can see a rapid and steady decline in Australia's CPI ranking since the year 2011. Welcome to the economic section of our Australia Pestel model. First, we cover Australia GNI. We can see by the data that Australia has had a steady climb in national income, a rise that can be partially attributed to the mining sector boom that has occurred for the past 10 years, as well as the tech sector coming to age for the Aussies. As you can see currently, Australia is roughly 12,000 below the US average, but they have also increased their national average by around the same figure since 2010. When we measure a country's income, we look at the gross national income per capita. That's the GNI. GNI per capita is the value added by each person to a country's total income divided by the total population. In Australia, it's $41,524. In Bangladesh, it's $2,713. In PNG, it's $2,453. Australia has a high economic freedom ranking and clearly outpaces the U.S. in this sector. Australia parallels the U.S. in government regulation while retaining a very strong banking system. Having such a high freedom ranking should entice further global investment. Australia's HDI is ranked second in the world. This is such a strong factor in business. For example, a company who wants to move into Australia should recognize this factor as when moving personnel and family into a location such as Australia. 
Let's compare Australia, a very high development country, ranked number two, with two of our neighbours, Bangladesh, a medium development country, ranked 142, and Papua New Guinea, a low development country, ranked 157. When we measure the health of a country, we look at the life expectancy of its people. In Australia, life expectancy is 82.5 years. In Bangladesh, it's 70.7 years. In PNG, it's 62.4 years. First, we can see that Australia has maintained continuity with their FDI inflows since the early 90s, with an upper trend starting in 2010, in part due to the mining boom and China trade. But we see that from 2013, there's been a negative shift. When we look at Australia outward FDI, the data shows Australian investments actually outpaced the U.S. during the 2008 recession, but has been on a downward spiral since then. When we analyze long-term investing through the FDI inward and outward stock data, it shows Australia has not been comparable to the U.S. with the amount of investment, but has an unshifting baseline, meaning it hasn't grown or decreased much for the past 11 years. When you think of Australia, you know, we are a small nation by population standards. We are really quite isolated by many measures across the world, and so therefore it's required us to be outwardly focused. And we've got to continue to be outwardly focused because that's what's grown the country to be where it is today. Combine that with a great entrepreneurial spirit, that's what I think will really grow Australian companies into the future. As you can see, Australia has a very large export ratio compared to the US, with the majority of their exports being iron ore and coal. Their main export country is China, which totals 32% of total exports. When the imports are analyzed, once again, Australia holds a larger ratio than the US. The main import for Australia is of course tourism and travel services, as Australia is a destination for many travelers. Australia has many free trade agreements, most notable are the US, China, Japan, Korea, Thailand, Singapore, and Chile as well as the TPP. Particularly the transition from the mining construction boom into the knowledge economy, so I think sectors like FinTech and health tech, tourism, education, really uh, urban thematics, if you like, which are generating wealth creation from Australia's major cities. In this section, we will discuss Australia's social culture. One of the major features to notice within the social culture slides are the similarities of Australia and the US. Australia does stand out in the education system according to the 2015 PISA scores. It exceeds the general OECD population in the U.S. in science, reading, and mathematics. One feature that Australia's education system encompasses is a minimization of standardized testing and the focus of education related to taking them. What makes Australia attractive for U.S. international business is its social cultural indicators that are comparable to the U.S. This is indicated in the Hofstede and Trapanano's graphs. Australia's change in religion majorities from 1984 to 2014 is its biggest social culture feature. Although many Australians are turning away from the Christian religion, there has been a major influx of Hinduism, Buddhism, and Islam within the country. About 1 million Australians were born in China or India. These migrations play a major role in changing the religion culture over the years. The next section is technology. The number of scientific publications has been on the rise and although the U.S. clearly produces 10 to 11 times the amount of publications that Australia does, the smaller population size of Australia makes the number of papers published per citizen very competitive with the United States. Australia has experienced intermittent spurts of growth in the number of patents filed from 2000 to 2006 and again from 2011 to 2013 and is on the rise again. Australia lags behind the United States in the number of patents filed, but again, the population size and the fact that many Australians may file up to four times the amount of patents abroad as domestically allows this country to compete with the United States. Australia ranked 23 overall in global innovation, while the United States is ranked four in 2017. Looking a little closer at the numbers, we see that Australia input and output sub-index scores compared to that of the United States, it suggests that more innovative input resources may be needed in Australia to produce the comparable output in the United States. However, Australia only lacks one-fifth the efficiency ratio of the United States, and spanning this gap is definitely within reach. This is one of the things that Malcolm Turnbull, our Prime Minister, has his heart set on, is innovation to compete in the, the next century. Australia's current technology focus is evident in the activities in the fields of biotechnology, nanotechnology, as well as geoengineering and synthetic biology. In this section, we will look at Australia's environmental side. 
where it ranks 13th in the world according to the 2016 Environmental Performance Index, while the U.S. ranks 26th. Australia's decreases in environmental risk exposure has led to its ranking number one in health impacts, while the U.S. ranks 19th. It's got some uh, opposition because one of those innovations is to do with uh, uh, cutting the coal mines uh, down in, uh, and making them renewable energies. Australia has also made significant strides in protecting its water supply, resulting in another ranking of number one in water and sanitation, while the U.S. ranks in at 22nd. Other notable strengths in Australia's indicators are its ranking fifth in air quality, as well as in wastewater treatment, where the country ranks in at number seven, while the U.S. comes in at 42. Many of Australia's biggest environmental issues are similar to the United States. Because of Australia's landscape, it continues to struggle with tree cover loss in its forests. Although the country's rank of 89 still leads that of the United States 105, the country's smaller land mass and peripherally located forests make this a significant issue. Australia has the most work ahead of them and lags behind the United States in preventing the loss of their fishery stock in agriculture. Specifically, Australia has the most room for growth in improving its efficiency in nitrogen use for farming. Another U.S.-led sector is climate and energy, where the U.S. ranked 44th and the Australian ranks 80th. However, Australia could close this gap with reductions in its CO2 emissions per kilowatt hour and carbon intensity in the environment. In this section, we'll take a look at Australia's legal system, which was derived from the English parliamentary common law system. The court system is an adversarial court system, which is presided over by a judge or magistrate. Australian courts are structured similarly to the United States, with a hierarchical system starting with the federal courts, lower federal courts, and finally state and territory courts. Australia differs only slightly from the United States in the flow and stratification of its courts for the specific issues such as family law, corporate bankruptcy, and property rights violations. Australia actually leads the United States in International Property Rights Index as number 12th overall compared to the United States 15th in 2016 data. Although both countries have saw a declining IPR index between 2007 and 2016, then Australia has gained back ground, increasing their IPR index score by 2.6%. Another one of Australia's attractive factors is in protecting intellectual properties. It shows its competitive potential in ranking number 13th along with top countries like the United States, which is ranked number one. The Australian-U.S. gap has narrowed since 2012, with Australia's intellectual property rights score increasing by 5.1% to 8.2 in 2016. Australia has a lot of real estate, and protecting, registering, and having access to loans for that real estate is one of its strengths. It ranked 16th in physical property rights, along with the United States at number 15 in 2016. Although the two countries have seen an average decline in their physical property rights scores in the last 10 years, Australia and the United States have reached a point where both are on equal footing in regards to physical property rights. In this section, we will discuss Australia's SWOT analysis. This includes the strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats for initiating an international business venture in Australia. Australia's strengths include an appealing and unique destination, a low inflation and housing market boom, and a desirable strong economy. The Reserve Bank of Australia maintains a low interest rate to attract more debt because consumers are willing to invest due to the smaller repayments. Well, we've got minerals, we've got beautiful land that they seem to like to to purchase there we've got businesses that they've uh, huge businesses that they've purchased from us australia's weaknesses within the swat analysis include the enforcement of environmental and economic laws and regulations to protect their lands and water and a below trend economic growth that may lead to unemployment and weakened consumer and business confidence this slow economic growth due to a slow inflation rate leads to idle resources and wasting of australia's productive capacity. Australia provides many opportunities, such as growing ties with China, fewer restrictions and regulations within their regulatory environment and markets. These are all attractive to Australia's close neighbor of China, who provides the market for distributing the resources Australia has to offer. Natural product, we can uh, manufacture in bulk, in high numbers, and we're able to help the Chinese there flood their market with them. Although Australia provides strong opportunities, its threats may hinder international business. Threats include a weak Australian dollar compared to the USA, which creates a decrease or slow economic growth and bilateral aviation capacity caps, limiting future growth on emerging markets. The ASA is undermining the airline industry by controlling the amount of airline seat capacity which may fly on scheduled services over individual country-to-country -country routes. Oh, yeah.